Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to RSHL action. This is the second game of the night, Empire vs. Direwolves. I, this is Thrill Hockey Zone. I'm joined tonight by Sting, stay-at-home defenseman of Shorthanded. And uh, what do you think about this game, Sting? Well, I have a feeling this game could go either way. I mean, uh, neither team really has shown uh, a lot to be thankful for this season, but uh, the opportunities will present themselves. Yeah, I think if I was going to bet money on it, I'd probably give Direwolves the advantage here. I, I think that Direwolves is the only of the bottom three teams that I see challenging for, seriously challenging for breakaway for the eighth playoff spot. And um, this is an important game for them. Both teams really need wins here, but if Direwolves does not win this game, I think that there's almost no way I see them performing well enough to make the playoffs. So this is a big chance for Direwolves to start getting the ball rolling and to show people that they're a little bit better than this bottom tier. Uh, if they lose this game, though, then it pretty much tells me that they're right where they deserve to be, and they probably won't make the playoffs. Yeah, and one of the bigger differences between the two teams is Direwolves seems to be a lot more defensive-focused than what I've seen from Empire. Yeah, Empire, you know, was surprising people with a couple of other games early on in the season. Um, they had a couple of close games, but defense has not been their strong point. They've allowed the most goals in the league by far, uh, almost near 40 or so, uh, a lot more than the, the second uh, team that's closest to them in, in that aspect. So that's something that they'll want to work on. Stigman turning it over to Trick, who's playing Warbird in this matchup. He had said in an interview he was going to try to focus on mid, but I guess he uh, gave up that idea when he felt that Direwolves needed him to uh, maybe produce more offensively. Yeah, he, he's probably in a situation where this game could pretty much make or break Direwolves, so he, he's trying to make sure that they actually get some points on the board. Fire cycling the puck around right now. Janky with a couple of nice dodges. And some weird lag there on my screen, at least. And Jack comes away with the puck. Nice pass. Jack, one of the newer members of uh, Dire Wolf. Good pass to Goldie, who tries to ball kill his way to a goal, but gets checked off. And Stigman passes up the one to Kula, who just misses the puck. A little bit of erroneous piloting by Kula there. And now Direwolves will try to make something happen coming the other way. Tries to hit uh, Goldeye, but misses him, but they're able to recover it off the, the wall. And Direwolves should try to play a slow game and just control the puck. And, and wait for the opportunities, because a team like Empire, at least from what they've shown so far, will leave defensive holes for you to go through if you're just patient and wait. But, you know, maybe they've been working on that, and maybe they'll surprise us, who knows. Yeah, and with a defense, you can always stay in game, so it's not like uh, Dire Wolves... Um, Playing more patient offense is going to put themselves out of a game. No, definitely not. Personally, maybe this isn't the game for it, but this has kind of been... Kana is not here tonight, but what I like to see from Dire Wolves is if they want to have a stronger presence in the midfield, maybe um, they have a lot of level 1 ships that have been playing, and to uh, counter that so that they can keep all those level 1 ships in, maybe have Puker switch to... Spider midfield. He played it for Breakaway one season when Breakaway uh, did pretty well and uh, was a key player for them. So I, I almost wonder if they should try that at some point. But I guess a team like Empire makes sense to have the offensive uh, tools there to take advantage of the opportunities that you inevitably will get. Yeah, and a Breakaway Empire. here. And Trick wow. hits the bank in a clean goal. It looked clean to me as well. There's a lot of people just spamming lag in chat, but I just didn't see any lag. 
No, I, I definitely didn't see any lag. I saw Trick uh, get the space for the breakaway. I saw him start down and go up, and Red Raven tried to check him as he flew across the crease and just missed the check. Now, something Empire's actually going to have to watch out for if they um, give him an opportunity. Puker is famous for the slap shot. Yeah, he is. Um, and he scores quite a lot of goals that way. And you, you have to wonder when people are going to start wising up to that and watching him every time. He, he specifically tries to choose moments that he think will catch people off guard. He seems to be pretty good at that, but... You got to think as time goes on, it should be less and less likely he scores though. But scores those, but he's been doing it for a long time and has still had success doing it even this season. So, Puker passes down to Short Man, who goes for the levy snipe, but a little too far out there. Didn't quite have the angle. Now Iceman H two O trying to pass across the crease, but. Not able to get it to Janky. Direwolves is going to feel a lot more comfortable now that they've scored that goal, and that might actually enable them to open up a little bit more offensively and lead to further goals. At least, they're hoping. Has shorthanded face Direwolves yet? Yes, uh, I think it was game two or three. Do you remember how it felt when you were playing against them? Kind of what, what did you take away from that game? Well, being completely defense, I didn't see too many offensive opportunities that I remember. Again, it's been a while. But uh, when they did, uh, I think Trick actually scored one, maybe two goals. But um, other than that, Trick, in that game at least, was their only source of offense. Goldeye gets a steal on Trick. Passes down to Jack, who had a slap shot revved up, but unable to get it past the defender. Goldeye going back to Spider again. He's played a lot of Terrier so far this season and has not had too much success with it. I mean, he's had a couple of splashes of success here and there, but... Um, has had really bad steel turnover ratios and, and check check death ratios for what you would expect from a defensive player playing a terrier. So maybe trying to get back into that spider ship that he feels a little bit more comfortable with. Wow, and I was actually wrong. I guess I was thinking about our preseason matchup versus them. Uh, their only goal against us was made by Acido uh, with an assist from Martos. It's like. Um, first game for Direwolves uh, that I have not seen Acido in the game. Seems to be one of the players that they consistently give uh, three periods to, or at least the majority, I see him playing the majority of the game every time, but um, out in this first period. Yeah, it looks like Jack is actually filling in uh, in his spot. And both teams only with one win so far this season. So, although we've been talking about how important it is for Dire Wolves, it's important to, for Empire to... Oh, nice shot by Jack, but that's it phased. A, yeah, yeah, it phased right at the end. That's, that's lag. But, you know, Jack shows some pretty good moves for somebody that I haven't seen around the zone very much. I, he does better than some of the other players on Dire Wolves, in my opinion. Um, he's done a pretty good job on the four check and just overall seems to be doing pretty well for what you would expect. Like I was saying before, uh, we talked about how very important it is to die rolls to be able to pick up this, this win in order to keep their playoff hopes alive. But you know, Empire could still rally and make a, a bid for the playoffs as well. So very important uh, for them, but of the two teams, I think that Direwolves probably has a better chance of threatening uh, the playoff teams. Yeah, Empire has got to be feeling like they're in quicksand right now. Uh, Goldeye ooh. off the post. Spider snipe there. Not sure if that would have went in if it was on net, but a decent look nonetheless. 
and now pool the shaker clears it up going the other way it's like Iceman finds some space and a goal wow yeah, I, um, it looked clean from here I mean it was kind of close it looks clean here and honestly um, Iceman capitalizing off of a pretty big defensive error by Shortman Shortman just uh, bit into the fake and Iceman did the buck cat sweep basically yeah, and that's uh, something you won't see out of short man very often. And now we've got a tie game, 3-3. Three to three. Um, And, of course, that's the last thing you want as a Lancaster. It's one of its biggest weaknesses, is that Warbird being able to sweep across the crease with the speed advantage that it had. And short man cheating up uh, on that fake there really, really hurts um, Chun-Li there. It's really tough to stop the Warbird in a 1VO against the Lank if you're on one side because you're expecting your defenseman to be top and the Warbird is on the same side and is able to just thrust up because he's just able to get to where he's going a lot faster. Play's going to slow down here for a second, bouncing off a few walls. And it looks like Trick tried to pass to Jack, but that pass misses. And it's going to end up back around Direwolf's blue line. And Shortman with the turnover to Stickman. Yeah, he was trying to time the spawn uh, for Trick, and it just did not work. Shortman coming up a little bit, and Jack looking for the shot. Forgot the puck, though. You can tell he's positioning himself to shoot, but just never... Got possession of the puck. And Iceman coming up to try to make another play that doesn't have the space here. Good pass to Janky, but Janky didn't quite have the angle to put that past the Lancaster. And a good check by Sigma. Not a good shot at all. And Iceman with another steal and gets behind Shortman again. Off the post, he did tank short man on my screen on that play. Yeah, actually. and there was also a phase, even if it did go in on my screen, so... And Trickman might find uh, some space here. Did I say Trickman? That's funny. Uh, <laughs> saved by the Red Raven. And CM Dross looked like he was trying to thread a, a pass through the defense there, but miscommunication because Iceman did not read that. Uh... To some people, that might have just looked like a really bad pass, but it actually was a really good idea, and Iceman just did not happen to be on the same page. Willow clears it up to Ice to nobody. Chun-Li will desperately rush forward to get a free save on that play. And Empire actually has the shot advantage right now, six shots to four with this first period wrapping up. Trick with a nice dot. Turns it over to stick. What's surprising is Empire is actually playing a bit more Team D than I'm used to seeing them. Mm. Well, that's one thing about Empire, despite maybe uh, their weaknesses and their la lack of roster depth compared to other teams, is they watch... Uh, the replays of their games, they try to figure out what they're doing wrong, and they make an effort to fix those. And they don't have the best roster in the world, so sometimes it's hard to make that work out, but they put the effort in there, and they try to work as a team, and that really works out as a good advantage for a team. And um, so far, it does seem like they have played a little bit better defense than they have in previous games, and that's definitely one of the big things they needed to work on. Looks like we've got some lineup changes on Direwolf. Uh, Acido uh, is playing in for Goldeye. And yeah. Artos and JDM Spoon are in for Puker and Jack. And with Artos and JDM Spoon in, honestly, not the strongest line for, for Direwolves either. And looking at the puck time there, it's almost even with Empire actually having five seconds more of puck time. And... Direwolves needs to be careful here. I feel like they feel like they can get away with playing some of these uh, maybe not so optimal lines against Empire because they think they're a stronger team. But you know this game is even, and they're actually down a little bit in puck control and shots. So 
uh, they don't want to end up playing with fire here and, and dropping this game to, to Empire because uh, they feel a little bit too confident, maybe. Yeah, and that's something you got to be really careful because even the less talented teams will take advantage of that. All right, so for the second period, do you have any predictions? What do you think is going to happen here between these two lines? Well, if Empire continues to play defense, which Raven's got to be happy about, then uh, I actually see them giving Direwolves some pressure not only on their defensive side, but also on the offense. And it looks like Empire likes the way that that line in the first period played, so they're going to go ahead and leave it in. There was a tank on the face-off. And Artos takes a shot to the bottom post, but the Red Raven is keen to Artos' plans there. And Kula with Really bad pass there. It just it was a pretty simple pass right in front of him and just missed Janky's ship by a good ship length. JDM Spoon to trick. Back to JDM Spoon. Takes a quick shot. Uh, didn't really have much of a chance of going in even if it hit the net. Maybe a little antsy. And... Empire with a chance here. Empire uh, could have had a chance there. Janky tried to pass it south to Kula Shaker and missed the pass. So that's one thing that's hindered them in this game is some missed passes on the offensive end. I've, I've noticed that. Um, Acido tries with the snipe. Um, he's really been really uh, bad about that this season, going for snipes that don't have much of a chance of going at very low percentage shots. And did not disappoint there. And, wow, some really sloppy passing by both teams in this period so far. Arto's going to pass to JDM Spoon top. Shoots top post, misses. Lag through the defender as well, on my screen at least. And Kula isolates himself in the corner. He's going to have to just cycle it back. And is able to, so... That works out for them. Stigman with a tank. See him draw with a slap shot. Actually, some pretty decent placement on that. That was going to get past Chun-Li, but luckily for Direwolves, Acido was in the way. Actually, a pretty tricky slap shot timing by CM Dross there. Good chance. And a wall pass up to Kula from Janky. Kula will try to get it up to Stigman, but Shortman intercepts it, and then Shortman ball kills Kula Shaker for his trouble. And six shots to six right now, so even. Direwolves really needs to score some goals in this period, though. I, I feel like they're taking this game a little bit too lightly. Janky tries for the snipe. Bottom post just misses. And Kula passes up to Janky, but those cross crease passes are a little bit trickier to pull off against the Lancaster and the Shark because the extended procs blocks off an extra uh, passing lane. Kula to Iceman tries to lay it off to Janky but another missed pass from Empire kind of slowing down their offense a little bit to be honest And a good uh, lunge by Kula Shaker, and this is going to be a two-on-one trick trying to get back to help out. 
Looks like Janky was about to take a snipe south, but got checked off in time to be prevented from doing that. And now Trick will come the other way, and now maybe a little bit of Odd Man Rush for Direwolf. Nice pass by Acido. JDM Spoon to Acido. Going up to Trick to Artos. And Artos with the ball kill. And mid shot. And it just gets past the goalie. Uh, Red Raven just was. Don't think he expected that ball kill to happen. Wasn't quite in position. And. I mean, it was kind of a weird. Uh, check timing, I guess. Maybe Red Raven didn't expect it, but. Um, anytime those shots are scored right directly in the middle of the net, you gotta think the goalie was not in the best position. Acido tries another snipe top, but the defender's in the way there. And now Empire with the puck. Nice check by JDM. JDM Spoon tries a sh I'm not sure if that was a shot or a pass. It was a uh, something that was not executed properly. We'll leave it at that. Kula, then decent idea, but you can't pass through defenders. Janky's gonna try to pass it across the crease to Stickman, but not enough momentum on that pass. And a four on two for Direwolves. They've got numbers here. And. Tricks pass to Artos phases. Really unfortunate there. That could have been a chance for Direwolves to start racking up a good lead. And Trick with a nice check. Direwolves trying to make something happen. Welcome back, Sting. Thank you. Sorry about that. Had a power issue, apparently. And Artos passes up to JDM Spoon. And he's going to take a shot top, but that's an uh, easy save for Red Raven. And Dyer will starting to take a little bit more control in this period. Uh, eight shots to seven, and they put a little bit of pressure on the last couple of minutes, but now Empire's coming back the other way. We'll see if they're able to make anything happen. Janky. Nice pass to Kula. Uh, it's slow enough to where they're not going to be able to get a goal off of it. And then Kula turns it over. Yeah, it looks like Empire's trying to utilize Kula to kind of counteract Shortman's defense. So far, hasn't seemed too successful in that. But uh, there's still a period and a half of game time. Left. So I might be able to make something happen up there. Uh, he really needs to work on the accuracy of his passes. I know Skula has been missing quite a few passes tonight, and nothing slows down an offense more than missed passes. It really messes with your flow and your chemistry, and uh, it makes it really hard to get stuff going. Yeah, and if you have enough of them, frustration can set in and cause long-term issues. Artos. Um, not sure. We'll just move on. All right. Stickman passes to Iceman. To Janky. And Iceman passes to Empty Space. Trick will end up picking that up for the turnover. And Trick passes off the wall to and as a turnover to Janky. Honestly, pretty sloppy game, if if I'm going to give my uh, feeling on the matter. Both teams missing way more passes and, and plays than they should. And then the lag phases never do help, so... We've had plenty of those tonight. Yeah, in both games, to be honest. Janky gets killed off by two checks from Trick. Of course, not being uh, in the best checking ship doesn't matter if you're able to land checks at will.
and CM Drills keeping the puck. Iceman's gonna not pass to Kula Shaker. And Kula just trying to power his way through. Tries to go on a ball killing craze and just turns it over. Not the best decision in the world. And a turnover by Kula to Dire Wolf and Trick flying around in the crease. Uh, fires the shot off a while in the crease. Um, that would have been a layup there. Definitely would have been a crease if that had gone in. Yeah, regardless, Raven wasn't going to have any of that. And Janky dodges Acido twice, but uh, Pass is unable to connect with the teammate. Probably ran out of puck time there. Acido trying to make something happen, but gets checked off by Stickman, who's playing the Terrier for once. And probably his best shift, although he's been reluctant to play it for some reason, but... Forechecking is definitely, I feel like, Stickman's best role. And he should stick to that Terrier as opposed to the Warbird. And he's done an okay job with the Trickman with the Breaker. And... Thought that he was uh, just going to do the same kind of top side deke that he did on the first play, but tried to turn back at the last second and be tricky and just didn't have the space there. Yeah, he tried to pass it back to Artos, but Raven's procs just picked it up. Kula Shaker going on another ball kill craze. Puck ends up with Dire Wolves yet again. And Short Man just misses a point blank pass to Artos. Both these teams really need to, um, I don't know, start the passing drills or something. Find some way to connect a few more of these wide open passes, not even being pressured. Yeah, it seems like the story of the night. Uh... Last game as well. Not as many missed passes, per se, as just blatant turnovers. And Trick kills off the levy and ball kill. Artos takes a shot there. And Artos can't get an easier one than that. Yeah, um, Raven initially was in a position to save that, and then it looked like he just flew up and gave Artos the angle. That was really, really... Confusing for me. It looked as though Raven was looking for the kill and didn't expect Artos to actually step out of the way. Yeah, um, Janky tries to snipe there, but misses the net. Some really bizarre play from Red Raven on that play. Um, it looked like he originally was in position and then flew out of the crease and down, and just the angle that he took when he thrusted kind of took him out of the play. Um... I don't know, but that's Artos' second goal of the night, and um, he'll be happy about that. Probably, maybe his first two-goal game of RSHL gameplay, I, I can't confirm that. Maybe we'll ask him later. And Artos maybe going to try to go for a hatch. Good check by Stigman. Doing a much better job in this Terrier than the other ships, in my opinion. Yeah, he's actually getting a lot of more ball control uh, in this matchup, playing in Terrier, than I've seen uh, out of any other ship he's been playing. So, short man, the highest rated player from that period. Uh, despite the fact that Arto scored two goals, his, his eight steals and 16 turnovers uh, prevents him from having a high rating. So, good job on picking up those goals. Needs to work on his puck control a little bit because to score two goals and not be the highest rated player um, in the period means you need to work on some of the fundamental things a little bit more. Well, in short man's 23 kills uh, actually propelled him to the top, so... That's true, but at the 16 turnovers and 8 steals, that bad turnover ratio really dropped him down far, and he had, he was even on, Artos was even on checked and checked deaths, with 7-7. Seven to seven. Um, Not really four in a jab. Uh, honestly, in it, with a two-goal period, you really expect to be rated closer to about 40, or at least over 30 if you have 
Um, a good spread on your stats. But, you know, a good period to get those two goals. And that's definitely going to help Dire Wolves take control of this game. Yeah, and Dire Wolves, they can use the offense, uh, whether it be Artos or Trick. I mean, anything um, which takes pressure off the D will help this team and allow them to actually concentrate on protecting the lead. And it looks like Gouldai is going to come in at midfield, and him and Acido are going to try to um, buckle down the Dire Wolves defense in addition to short man a little bit. Uh, they definitely need to make sure they keep this lead. Like I said, very important uh, game for, for Dire Wolves. They, they need to get a win. They, they've had some decent outings against some of the teams and have only been able to come away with one win, and that's really frustrating. So if not even just to make sure that they are still on playoff contention, just to make sure that their team does not have really low morale, you know, they, they need to pick up this win. It's important for Empire's morale as well, but Empire only had, I believe, one win last season. It was a forfeit, so they are no strangers to losing. And while it certainly will impact them, I think that they'll still be a co cohesive team for the rest of the season regardless. And for Dire Wolves, uh, you know, if, if they don't end up picking things up, you, you got to think that they might not react the same, in the same positive manner that Empire might. Yeah, and teams that find themselves on the losing end, uh, almost out of playoff contention, uh, you end up using the rest of the season to try to get better at some of the things that maybe you haven't done well during the rest of the season. You can spend more time focusing on perfecting your game than actually trying to uh, win all your games. I mean, regardless if you're losing team, not making the playoffs or not, you still want to win, but you kind of have to refocus your goals. Certainly, and well, I think that Breakaway is probably the early favor for the 8th spot. If Dire Wolves win this game, uh, they are tied with Breakaway and wins with 2, so that would be good for them to make sure that they're staying close with that race and potentially able to overtake Breakaway. Artos with the pass to Trick. And I, I saw a tank. I saw no bullet. I... There's not a tank message that was registered on the ref rec, but I saw a bullet and a hit. All right, so um, that was voted back by the lag frec for uh, by the ref rec for the tank. Yeah, it's kind of puzzled. I mean, uh, from my perspective, I didn't see any attempt, but yeah, lag would explain that. A couple people on the ref uh, frequency saw clean as well, so maybe one of those weird plays where a couple people saw different things, but the majority of people saw saw the tank there. So maybe it'll pick up in the server. And Janky didn't get the cross crease pass, decided not to take the shot, and Empire will cycle around a little bit. And Empire with a good chance here, Janky. Tries to pass to Kula, but Artos with the interception. Yeah, good it. defensive play by Artos. Trick passes to Goldeye, who takes a spider snipe from about 25 feet out. One of the worst snipe attempts I've ever seen. Literally less than 0% chance of going in. Literally. And Dire Wolves coming up with an odd man rush again. Trick passes to Goldeye who hogs it and gets a shot bottom post goal for Dire Wolf. And it looked clean from here. Yeah, and there weren't really people challenging Trick who was the puck carrier, and there weren't people that were following Goldeye, the puck recipient. And when you can just fly around the crease and do whatever you want, that 
is usually going to result in the other team scoring. And in the first two periods, the shot count was kind of even, but in this third period, Dire Wolves is pulling away. It's now 14 shots to 8, and it looks like they're probably going to start pulling away even further uh, if things keep going the way they are in the first few minutes of this third period. Now the question is, with them being trying to fight for this playoff spot, will they take this opportunity, putting up higher numbers, uh, to actually play some of their other players? Well... One thing to think about is, it honestly, in this season, hold on, Ice Man takes a shot, misses the net, could come down to a win or two or even a tiebreaker for the eighth playoff spot. So I say you definitely want to get as many goals as you can because, uh, you know, that could potentially be an impact as a, as a tiebreaker. And another thing to think about as well is just when your team has struggled to pick up wins so much, getting a win with a by a large margin really boosts your team morale. The higher the goals are, um, the better your team feels about itself. So, um, absolutely, probably for this particular situation, keep the uh, pedal on the metal. Yeah, and usually if you're in the lead like this and you make too many changes, uh, it can be counterproductive uh, more than you think. Uh, and I know Trick, he likes to get everybody some play time, which I do not fault by any means, but uh, some games you just gotta keep the pressure. Artos looking to get a hat trick, doesn't fire a shot, but Trick with a good check and a huge save by CM Dros. Goalie was completely beaten, CM Dros is just able to get in front of Trick there and prevent that from being a short goal. Artos uh, getting his second period of the night here. I, I got to think that originally he probably would not have got this period if he didn't score those two goals, but Dire Wolves rewarding him for his solid performance in the second period. Yeah, and he's actually deserved it. Uh, he's even playing some good defense for the team. And he will try to take a shot bottom post. Ends up getting a double turn. Probably a defensive crease coming up here. Yeah, it looked really close if not. Which, that's something that Empire can't afford. Just kind of waiting to see if it is actually penalty and for it to be called. But in this situation, uh, you already see Empire taking a little more risks on the offensive side and being down a man. Uh, will they actually play more defense to counteract, try to kill the penalty, or are they just going to continue to uh, sporadically push on offense? Well... At the moment, I don't think they're going to have a hard time killing this penalty off because it's for zero minutes and zero seconds. Stickman knows how to run the penalty box. Stickman sitting in spec, but he needs to get back into the game so the referee can fix this. And there we go. Uh, penalty on Stickman for two minutes. And Stickman is doing a pretty good job in the Terrier on the four check for Empire. So having him out and also having um, dual level one bullets and with Janky and Iceman could hurt them for this power play. Yeah, I foresee uh, Dire Wolves actually getting a score out of this. And three of their players on Empire going up for offense on the penalty for some reason. And that's a oh. huge odd man run. Acido trying for a slap shot goal, but FaZe prevents that. 
Yeah, it would have been close to Raven was reading the play, but he looked like it could have just skimmed his procs. Love passing back to Red Raven, and th that's actually this is a smart thing to do. Not that part of it, but um, smart thing to do um, when you're shorthanded is to just reset the puck back to your side of the net and keep control of it, as opposed to just dumping it, which is what I see a lot of teams do. Um, it makes sense in ho real hockey, but in this game, dumping the puck away, even when you're shorthanded, just ensures that they're going to get possession of the puck. So I say try to keep possession of the puck for as long as you can uh, when you're shorthanded in hockey zone. I would agree. Uh, it makes it a lot easier because you find yourself out of position uh, if you continuously dump it. Looks like Sam Dross is actually going to play a little more defender side. And honestly, um, Empire players still trying to go up on offense. And cool has even been cherry picking a couple of times. Um, pays off there with a lunge, and now this could be a potential uh, breakaway. He's going to pass up the Kula, probably. No, he decides to hog it there. One of the only times I've seen Janky hog that, and the in a moment where, honestly, he should have taken that cross-crease pass that he's usually so fond of. And the question is, is he just so uh, kind of frustrated at the fact that they're playing this far behind, just trying to make anything happen? And hold on a second, because Kula Shaker with another lock gets a break and tries a fade. I, I really wish we would have tried another shot because... Uh, trying a fade against the levy makes no sense, and I mean against the lane makes no sense. And since the levy has such high shot power, um, he definitely could have made a better go of that. Acido killed in the crease over the goal, so it counts as a crease. And about four minutes and thirty-five seconds uh, left in the game. Penalty is over, and. Empire needs to score three goals in the next four and a half minutes. Very unlikely that that will happen. Yeah, I just don't see Dire Wolves' defense uh, just letting in any old goal. So, and maybe not just that, but maybe the Empire offense might not be up to the the task at at the moment. Uh, uh, with the way they've been missing passes, especially, I'm I'm not confident that they'll be able to score even one more goal in the next four minutes. Hopefully they'll prove me wrong. I mean, I don't want to be that critical of a team. I hope they prove me wrong, but I, I'm just going based on my observation of the team. Yeah, it just seems like it'd be more of a Dire Wolves breakdown than of a uh, actual change in what Empire's doing at this time. More phasing, and there has been a lot of lag tonight, but you got, you, Dire Wolves definitely probably has more than its fair share of lag compared to the rest of the line. A goal by Dire Wolves. I saw uh, a few hits, but I don't know if they dudded. Okay, so it was confirmed it was a dud, and the goal was clean. Yeah, and it looked like Red Raven just bit way too heavily into the pass there, and Acido just kept the puck and, you know, had a huge opening to shoot at. Red Raven was nowhere to be found. Neither was the defense. A big lack of defense and goaltending on that particular play. And there we saw Puker trying his line slap shot, uh, but the delay just canceled out the slap shot. And I think with Puker, it, it's less of people um, not being aware initially. I think they get into a situation where they're paying attention to uh, what the other players are doing and they actually lose track of him. Yeah, and uh, Puker passes to Artos, not able to get his hat trick there. Um, Artos passes off the wall. Um Puker told me about this before. I, I've asked him about it, and he, he chooses his moments very carefully, so there is some method to the madness. It's, he usually waits until after a couple goals have been scored, and um, he expects the goalie to be typing, and no check on Artos. Yeah, it looks clean here, and it is called clean. 
yeah, that's uh, another goal by Dire Wolves. And sorry that I was telling a story there, but I didn't expect that none of the Empire players would even attempt to check the Dire Wolves players, which is what happened on that play. Yeah, it looks like they've just kind of given up at this point, at least that play. Yeah, um, don't even remember what I was saying now, so I think I was talking, oh yeah, I was talking about how Puker chooses um, his moments for his slap shots after a couple of goals have been scored because he expects the goalie to be typing and, and things of that nature, which is why it seems to work out so well. He doesn't just do it randomly. No, and I've been on, uh, I was actually on Dire Wolves last season uh, and played with Puker, and it, it's one of those things where he sees something He'll actually make the call, and nine times out of ten, that goal is in. Yeah, it's really crazy the amount of times that works. Goldeye with the ball killed, but unable to retain the puck. About a minute and a half left. And Anatuma in the game as a weasel, but checked off by Goldeye. And this could be another goal for them. Puker tries to take a snipe top post, and that might have gone in if the defender hadn't caught it. Yeah, IDK was in very good position to pull that one. Wow. Nice man scored. Yeah, clean here. That's the second um, sweep that he's made. Just kind of a regular butt cat uh, sweep kind of move, and... Chun Li, uh, boogeyman, apparently really weak to those. Kind of moves up and tries to check him, and didn't even come close to hitting him. Kind of worrisome to see that the Empire has two goals, both of them very individual efforts. So they have not been able to get anything going as a team on offense, to be honest. Yeah, uh, Artos there with a wide shot. Empire trying to put pressure on the D, but the entire Dire Wolves team is actually playing back, so. And it's something that Dire Wolves does well, so I'm not surprised. Um, regardless of who they play, that they play good Team D. Puker. Revved up the slap shot, they weren't able to pass to him. Artos maybe had a chance for a shot there. Didn't expect the pass to get to him from Golda. Iceman, Iceman. Can go for his hat trick on the sweep. Not able to get it through this time. Yeah, Chun Li said two's enough. And that's gonna end the game. Final score. Direwolf 6, Empire 2. Yeah, and Artos with the hat trick in that game. That's something you don't see every day. But it's nice to see some of the people that are, are known for being lower tier players able to step up and have some success regardless of what team it's against. Yeah, and it's something that can actually boost everybody's morale and next game who knows maybe they'll just continue to roll with it well a big win for dire wolves i think um if people had to bet money on it before this game they probably would have expected dire wolves to win and now they have uh the same amount of wins as breakaway and it's going to get really interesting interesting to see which teams uh between breakaway and dire wolves are able to consistently pick up uh points to see who's going to probably get that 8th playoff spot, because right now it seems like two of those teams are probably going to be the ones duking it out. Alright, well, we're about done here as, as we're wrapping up. you have any final comments about the game, Stan? Uh, I do not, actually. Alright, well, a uh, couple of good games tonight. Of course, Dirty Birds uh, victorious in the earlier affair over Breakaway, making it possible for Dire Wolves to come back and tie Breakaway in the standings. 
after they win 6-3 to three here against Empire. And tomorrow, uh, Baby Seal Killers takes on shorthanded, so both of us will actually be participating in that game. So we'll be able to uh, see how that goes. Well, uh, thank you for joining us, guys, and we will see you tomorrow.